Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Jeff Nowitzki. I'm the Senior Vice President of Athlete Health and Performance with the UFC. Uh, up here with me today is Donna Marcolini, and together, the both of us uh, work our anti-doping program, the UFC's anti-doping program, which is independently administered by the United States Anti-Doping Agency, or USADA. We are, I can't even come up with enough adjectives to explain how thrilled, excited, and honored we are to be here today to present Holly Holm with recognition of the first UFC athlete to been tested 50 separate times under uh, the UFC's anti-doping program and have a flawless and spotless record um, from those tests. What Holly's gone through, in fact, she was just tested this morning, so we can add one to that, 51 tests. Um, here's what you have to go through to make sure over a five-year period tested that many times. Um, a, you have to let USADA know where you're at so you can be tested. Our program is a true 365 day a year, 24 hour a day program. Holly and any other UFC athlete can be tested at any time and it's un unannounced. There's no advance notice, not even the UFC knows. You compare that with some other professional sports, only tested during the season, only tested when they get to the ballpark. In fact, Holly this morning, the tester came to her house early um, she wasn't ready to provide a sample, so followed her here. Her, you know, her performance inside the octagon um, is clear. She's, she's a legend, but I think what this shows, and it's what all of us know internally, is that Holly Holm is as much of a legend, a role model, and a leader outside of the octagon as she is in the octagon. Um, I'm so proud to you know, be able to be up front and, and observe her career and have her you know, be that leader and that role model for the UFC in our program, not just to other UFC athletes, but to other MMA athletes from other promotions, other professional athletes, and to young you know, boy and girl athletes you know, throughout the world. Holly Holm is the epitome of a leader and a role model. So to, uh, to recognize Holly for her, uh, for her 50 tests, uh, we've stepped our game up a little bit, and uh, <laughs> so right. here's a little Letterman's jacket Thank with the 50 you. time symbol here, Holly's name on it, and uh, UFC it. on the back. So, well, Holly, we couldn't be. Do I put it on? Yeah. Yeah, throw that thing on. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. We couldn't be more honored yeah. and uh, more and excited to, to honor and Holly Holm. Take a picture. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it worked. All right. Awesome. Thank you all for coming out. Thank you for the kind words. Um, I mean, it's an honor to get this, and I'm, I'm thankful that there is the testing because I know that I'm facing someone who's also clean. Um, for me, I guess it's never really been like, um, you know, I, I've never wanted to use any kind of performance enhancing because it's always been something that I want to know that I know my own hard work and my own, you know, my will, my passion, everything is always what I've kind of relied on um, for a victory. So I feel like it um, always gave me more of a confidence going in knowing that I did it myself and didn't have any help. I think that was kind of more my mentality for it. But um, it's, I still do get really curious about all the different supplements because people are out there, are, you know, there's stuff that you don't even know you're taking, you're not intentionally wanting to take. And so um, I'm just really glad that we have programs like this that help us out so that it help us like know and have confidence in what we're taking. So thank you so much for the kind words. I'm going to keep trying to keep doing well and um, keep going forward, have victories, and keep doing the best I can for my legacy. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Questions? Hey, Holly, uh, with sort of the surge of, of people testing for contaminated supplements now, is that, has that ever given you pause to say, maybe I just want to take, I want to put nothing in my body except for food? It does make you question it a lot. Um, I feel like I kind of stick to what I have been taking because I'm confident in it because it's not come out, you know, with any kind of positive test. So I feel like sometimes because I have the confidence in the supplements I do take, I kind of just stick to what I know. And I mean, I even get nervous if somebody's like, I have this energy drink, do you want some? And I'm like, yeah, I really want some, but I'm just not going <laughs> to. Like, I don't even want to sit because I really don't know what's in it. And um, so sometimes it's just, I'm like, you know, I'm just going to go get a Diet Coke instead if I'm like, really need to, like, to fulfill that, like, you know, I want something to drink or whatever. But um, I don't know. I, I definitely am glad that, I'm fortunate that I've, the supplements that I have put my confidence in have, have not, you know, sometimes that can just be, you know, a misfortune for some people, you know, that they put their confidence in something um, that came back 
um, positive. So, um, but that's why it's so great to have these programs. They can tell you, hey, here's these supplements that have been tested and they're clean. So then you have that confidence um, in those supplements. So there's a few that I've changed. And the ones that I have changed to are the Thorn products just because um, they're with the UFC and that I can have those and I know that I'm confident in them. So, um, yeah, it makes you kind of second guess some things. But um, I also feel like if you just kind of take responsibility for yourself, you can it takes a little bit of work, but I, I, I'm, I'm got to say I'm fortunate that I haven't had anything that's been tainted, too, so. For them to come and honor you like this, this is just like validation. I'm like, hey, you know, I, I tell you guys, I never you. I know. You know, um, that's, I, I think that's probably my biggest nightmare is to ever have something come back like that because it's like I've spent my whole career making sure that I'm clean and making sure that I would just work hard for it, and that is my biggest nightmare because one thing that can happen, one picogram that doesn't even do anything, can really taint your whole legacy and have people question everything you do, and everything that you've worked for in your whole life is just discredited by that. And so that is um, when you put your heart and soul into that your whole life and then have one thing that can happen, then they go back, they go, oh, well, then they just discredit your entire career. All those hours, all those years of work, and one negative test can totally just taint your whole legacy. And um, I actually really feel for some of the fighters that have had that happen when it hasn't even been anything real significant and nothing that was intentional, and they've always had hard work, you know? And so um, I'm definitely very, um, very fortunate, very blessed that everything's, I've never had anything like that happen because that's my worst nightmare. How much pride do you take, though, too? Because you're a person that's always in the gym. And obviously always, like in, like in your last fight, you're just in great shape. And I know you take pride in your shape, so how, in being in shape, so how, I mean, now that you have the validation that, you know, you are all natural and you're just a, you know, really good shape? I feel confident in, in my conditioning and I do feel strong and it is just from hard work and it's not really just from one training camp it's from all the years you know I don't really like to take too much time off in between fights because I don't want to be starting from square one every time I have a you know a fight camp but there's little things that get physical um, endurance gives me mental strength you know so when I know that I'm going to be conditioned that I'm more confident and in, in being able to kind of keep whatever pace a fight brings um, and with that, I mean, in training, there's times, this last fight, you know, there's a lot of nights and evenings spent at the hospital. Um, so I would go running at 11.30 p.m., and I'm running at 11.30 thinking, well, I know my opponent's not doing this, and so I know that I'm going to be that one, one step ahead. And so sometimes it's just the choices that I make and that anybody can make in a training camp. We all train hard, but... Um, and there's a lot of people out there that do. They really train hard, but that's what I, I put a lot of my confidence in is that I know that I have the drive and the ambition for it, and then that carries over into the fight. How quickly do you want to get back in there? I mean, I know it's just been a month or so, five weeks. Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah. I'm definitely ready to fight. I think, I mean, not that I've talked about it a whole lot, but um, with my dad having a stroke for my last fight, that was just kind of one of those, you know, um, as soon as I got back, I wanted to give him 100% of my time. And I'm healthy and have no injuries from the fight, and I feel great. Um, and he's doing great. He's been back at home for a week now. So That's great. Um, we've been blessed with that. And so I'm ready to get back at it. Do you, do you map out your, your 2020 and say, hey, I'd like to fight three times because you know that those just are the kind of numbers that put you back in that, in that mix? Yeah, just one fight at a time, whatever they want to give me next. And I feel like if I plan on three and I'm not focusing on the first one, you know, the one step gets you to the next step to the next step. And so I know that I need to stay focused on whatever's in front of me. You know, there's a lot of things. My last fight was a victory. I dominated. There's no question about it. But there's still things I learned that I want to do better, that I want to move forward, that I could have done better in the fight. And so I want to work on those things, and I need to implement those in my next fight and just focus on the next thing at hand. I'm sure you get some quality time with your father now. Uh, I did. You know, something like that would put a lot of things in perspective. Absolutely. Um, you know, he, um, it's actually quite spectacular how, he, well, how well he's doing for um, how big of a stroke he had. So, um, I mean, he has no paralysis and talking fine, living on his own. And I was on a bike ride with him the other day. We rode like four miles, and I was like <laughs> looking at him, and I'm like, <laughs> I did not think I'd be doing this one month ago, you know, spending the night in ICU and for four nights and then going to a regular room for a while and then going to an inpatient rehab. And um, it just uh, it shows how well 
he was taken care of and, and the guidance he had as well, you know, um, a lot of great doctors. So I'm very thankful for that. And um, I know leading up to the fight, my dad would never have wanted me to just like have to cancel everything to sit aside. I know he would want me to keep pushing forward it was one reason why I still kept the fight. Yeah. And secondly, um, I knew that once he didn't have all the help of the doctors and the nurses and was out, that's when he would need more of my time. And that was going to be when I, my fight was over. So it was one of those things, too, that I thought I need to fight, fight hard for him. And then when I'm done, I can focus on him. And little did I know I would already be, OK, <laughs> I'm going to go meet him for lunch today. He's driving himself and doing well, living on his own. And it's just, I mean, you know, praise God, honestly. Right. Has he had a chance to watch that fight? Yeah, the nurses actually filmed it on their phone, and the next morning went in at 7 a.m. when they checked in and let him watch it. <laughs> so he was, I've, um, and you know what, I, I do, I really want to say that the people at Loveless um, Emergency Room, the people at the UNM um, the Neuroscience and the Rehab Center right here at the Loveless Rehab Center right here on Elm Street, all of them did just um, amazing things. I got one, one more question about your jacket. Are you going to be walking around like <laughs> I don't know. I'm gonna, I'll find its its best purpose, you know. <laughs> Every jacket we have like different jackets for different things, right? So I'll figure out what this one will be for. <laughs>